All right, everyone, let's jump back into this. You see that the save file says uh, day two trial former. That's because there are multiple trial segments per day. So this is this uh, case is going to get really ridiculous. I think there are more trial segments in this one episode than there are in any other Ace Attorney case. Um, with the exception of, I think, uh, the Great Ace Attorney. I think the Great Ace Attorney has... Uh, a lot of those, so anyway, let's jump in. February 23rd, 9.34 a.m., District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. How did the investigation go yesterday, Mr. Wright? Frankly, there are still a lot of gray areas. Or rather, the whole thing is one big gray area. Don't worry about me, no matter what the outcome. I'm ready to accept my fate. I believe in you, sis. Mr. Wright, let me offer you a word of advice. Yes? A defense attorney should never believe their client. The defendant is called to trial because they are suspected of wrongdoing. Never forget that. Miss Sky, you... You remind me a lot of Mia. But there is one decisive difference between you and her. And that is... You're not a defense attorney. I believe it's almost time for the trial. Good luck, Mr. Wright. My first trial without a Fay helping me. No one's going to bail me out this time. Go away. I'll be alone in there. So I have to discover the truth all by myself. Good, that's the way it should be. Let's do it, Mr. Wright. I'll be with you the whole way. Outstanding. February 23rd, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom number 9. Rubble, 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 clack. Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Lana Skye. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution has been ready for a while, Your Honor. Edgeworth. It's been two months, but I haven't been in a courtroom since his trial. I guess that end credit scene of them uh, duking it out in court was just uh, a work of fiction then. Retcon out of existence. I hope that personal feelings will not be a part of the proceedings today, Mr. Wright. I will choose the path I think is right, regardless of what those around me might say. The judgment is to be made here. Uh, the judgment to be made here is in our hands, not those of anyone else. Very well, Mr. Edgeworth, your opening statement, please. Chief Prosecutor Lana Skye has committed an unpardonable act. Not only that, but she was rash enough to commit it in the prosecutor's office lot. Wow, he's much more forceful in person. I suddenly feel like confessing to everything. However, she will now pay for her rashness with her life. There was a witness to her crime. A professional witness. Clack. Well then, you uh, call your first witness, Mr. Edgeworth. The prosecution... The, oh my god, Pah, start over. Tongue tied. The prosecution calls its first witness, Miss Angel Starr, to the stand. A cough-up queen. Someone who sells lunches is called a cough-up queen. Hmm. Haven't I seen you somewhere? You ordered the caviar lunch, right? Oh, ho! Caviar! I've never eaten caviar before. The judge is really wolfing it down. Ah, uh, and for you, I have a fiesta bowl. Uh, thanks. Will the witness state her name and profession? Ah, uh, and you, sir? Did you order the fingerprint lunchbox? It's too early for lunch. Your name and profession, please. Well, Your Honor, how does it taste? Mmm. So this is why everyone raves about caviar. Oh, yum. Uh, it's so tasty, it hurts. Mm. I was always... I, I always thought caviar would uh, taste like a uh, uh, pickled tapioca. What the heck does pickled tapioca taste like? Name, profession... Now. 
Me? The name is Angel Star. Don't go forgetting it. I find myself myself running Lunchland these days. Is that what you wanted me to say, Mr. Edgeworth? Very well, witness. Please describe the incident to us. The prosecution will wait. Mm. I, I'm not finished eating. Mm. Hurry it up. Mm. Very, very well, Mr. Edgeworth. Um, as you know, mm, uh, we usually call on the police to provide a mm, de description of the crime. Mm. Your Honor, as Mr. Mr. Edgeworth has said to the court, I am a professional. Oh, uh, huh. What exactly does that mean? Mm, yummy. Mm. Until two years ago, Miss Angel Star was a special investigator with the police. She was a first-rate homicide detective. But what? Miss Star was a detective? Ah, aha! Uh -huh. I, I know who you are. Cough up. Cough up Queen Angel Star, Your Honor. Long time no see. Clack. Well, very well. You may continue with the description, Miss Star. Mm. Oh. Just who is this lady? If I might have the court's attention over here. The parking lot at the prosecutor's office is divided into two blocks. A block is for the prosecutor, the prosecutor's office personnel. B block is for visitors and clients. A chain divider separates the two blocks. I suppose that's to keep the visitors from taking up prosecutor spaces, yes? The crime took place by a car in the back of A block in the car's trunk. The killer stabbed the victim with this knife and went to drive the body out. Unfortunately for her, there was a witness, and an arrest was made on the spot. And who was this valiant witness? Why, it was me, Your Honor. Parking lot floor plans added to the court record. Witness, did you see the very moment of the crime? Of course, Your Honor. Immediately after that, I apprehended the chief I apprehended the chief prosecutor. Hmm. It seems rather cut and dry, doesn't it? Very well, Mr. Wright. Uh I can't agree on principle, Your Honor. It seems that some poor losers are unwilling to accept the truth, Your Honor. Shall I proceed to crush what little hope they have remaining? If you can, then give them your worst, Miss Star. Oh, God, so... Mm. Wait, are they talking about me? Witness testimony. Somehow, I always knew a day like this would come. I was on my way to deliver a lunchbox to my boyfriend. Which one? When I sensed something, perhaps it was my finely honed detective's intuition at work. Through the wire fence, I saw the chief prosecutor standing next to a garish car. The chief prosecutor was holding a knife in her right hand. Then she thrust the pointy tip of the knife into Detective Goodman's chest. Hmm, bringing a lunchbox to your boyfriend, how touching. Hmm, as you can see, there is no room for doubt. The key point of your testimony seems to be nothing other than the point of the knife which you saw being stabbed into Detective, into Detective Goodman. So, how does it feel to be so utterly crushed? I... I'm still thinking about that. It, it's merely a flesh wound, Mr. Wright. Very well, Mr. Wright. You may cross-examine the witness. Witness account. Somehow, I always knew a day like this would come. How did you know? I respect the prosecutor's basic abhorrence of crime, yet their methods are ugly and twisted. Twisted methods will always lead to tragedy. The lunch lady's uninformed opinion is duly noted. Given that they are used to erasing inconvenient evidence at their whim, 
killing off a detective that knew too much is merely an extension of that. Hmm. Miss Starr, do you have something personal against prosecutors? I felt that I had found my dream job when I became an investigator, and if I hadn't been laid off by the by those prosecutors over there, I'd still be one. Laid off? She was fired? To me, prosecutors are nothing more than worms. That said, I am a pro, as you know. My testimony is unbiased and flawless. Very well, you may continue, Miss Starr. I was on my way to deliver a lunchbox to my boyfriend. Hold it. This boyfriend, he's the detective? Not that boyfriend, the security guard boyfriend. But that boyfriend, you have several? Yes, this boyfriend, that boyfriend, and the other boyfriend. They're all cucks. Care to join? The yet another boyfriend position is still open for applicants. I'll stick with the lunches, thanks. Mmm, so, mm, so good. Note to self, the judge had to think before replying. The security guard room is in the lot in A block. It's up on the second level, so you can see everything from there. That would be the room with the security sign. Incidentally, did you bring your lunchboxes by car? Since I'm a visitor now, I parked in B block. So, she was in B block when she witnessed the crime. Yeah, she was on the other side of the fence, which will be key to this somewhere, I'm sure. When I sensed something, perhaps it was my finely honed detective's intuition. Oh, shut up. You sensed something? So you're saying you had a premonition of the murder? It felt like... How would you say... Oh, yes. It was like the feeling you get when you view a pumpkin chalk full of seeds. I have no idea what that means. Speaking of uh, detective intuition, wasn't the victim Miss Bruce, Mr. Bruce Goodman also a detective? Yes, well, he was like a young cheese. Uh, a young cheese? A pale white cheese, not yet tangy with experience on the streets. A greenhorn. Hmm, then I must be hard, yellowed, and sharp as a tack. Yeah, with the odor of an old cheese to match. In any case, there, there in the lot, I felt something stirring in the back of my mind. <laughs> Your lunch lady senses were tingling. Through the wire fence, I saw the chief prosecutor standing next to a garish car. By garish car, you mean... Ugly, that's... I mean, uh, Mr. Edgeworth's car, yes. Mr. Edgeworth! Incidentally, the knife with which the victim was stabbed was also Mr. Edgeworth's. Wasn't it? Indeed it was. Rubble, rubble, rubble. Hmm, what an odd case this is. And the person you saw, you are sure it was the defendant? I saw her from no further than 30 feet away. I am certain it was her. If she's telling the truth, we're doomed. Let's just do what we can. Even if we don't have any proof, we can always nitpick. That's my job. Witness, in your testimony, you clearly stated the following. Prosecutors are nothing more than worms. Ergo, you are a biased witness. You might want to keep those silly opinions to yourself in the future, rookie. Huh? Rookie? Who's scruffy looking? Unless you're willing to risk the consequences of doubting me. Hmm? I'll fry you like a fritter. Crispy on the outside, chewy on the out on the inside. You'll fry like a pork sausage. Uh, well, that was inspiring. I believe I've heard that tagline elsewhere. You could cry plagiarism. I might be relegated to the lowly post of lunch lady, but my instincts are honed. A, a photograph? You took this? The moment I witnessed the crime, my, re my reflex took over and snap, I took a picture. In fact, one of my lunchboxes is rigged with a camera. 
I suppose that's more exciting than just hanging it around your neck. Witness, why am I only seeing this photograph just now? You think I'd show it to you, a prosecutor? Think again. Mm -hmm. My boyfriend works in the photography division of criminal affairs. Well, this is most certainly the defendant. Photo added to the court record. Uh-oh, this is unmistakably Lana Sky. So what was the defendant doing at the time? The chief prosecutor was holding a knife in her right hand. Hold it. Tell me more about this knife th that the suspect was carrying. Well, I'd say the blade was about four inches long. Is that right, Mr. Edgeworth? It is your knife, after all. Um, <clears throat> yes, that's about right. Prosecutors are, by nature, well-versed in the location of a man's vital organs. I'm sure it was easier than boiling an egg for my egg salad surprise set. You, you can't testify to, the, to her ability to kill an egg. I, I mean a person. Hmm. Perhaps a chicken salad set would have been a better metaphor. So, uh, the defendant was holding a knife. What then? Then she thrust the pointy tip of the knife into Detective Goodman's chest. Okay, this is the last line. Tell the court why you didn't try to stop this crime, because she was on the other side of the fence. You did see her raise the knife to strike, no? Hmm, the defense has a point. Unfortunately, by the time I realized what was going on, it was already too late. Too late? Hmm... Yes, the next moment, the chief prosecutor brought down the murder weapon. I... I see. It's only a flesh wound, Mr. Wright. We can make it. You said that before. Also, talk about... Uh, talk about plagiarism. I know what that's a reference to. Uh, anything else? Scientifically speaking, Miss Starr's testimony is flawless. Shut up. Sounds pretty fatal to me. But what do we do? Is this it? Is my sister guilty? Let's just keep our heads cool and press the witness a bit, shall we? For some reason, having her panicking next to me makes me calmer. Don't smile like that! Okay, let's take a look at this piece of evidence that we just got. Okay, yeah, I spotted this first time. There's blood on that jacket. And there's no knife in her hand. So this is after the crime. So, we gotta find something. Okay, wasn't there something else? Oh yeah, the floor plan. Because as I pointed out earlier, there's this chain link fence between uh, the crime scene and where she was standing. So that's gonna come into play too. I just gotta find something that contradicts one of these two. I'm gonna to deliver a lunchbox to my boyfriend when I sense something. Perhaps it was my finely honed detective's intuition. And where I'm trying to Standing next to a garish car. The prosecutor was holding a knife in her right hand. She thrust the pointy tip of the knife into Detective Goodman's chest. Okay, it's one of these last two statements. Which one? It might even be both. We might we might have uh might be able to press this on both. Um just have to pick which one is more likely. Rust pointy tip of the knife. Was holding a knife in her right hand. Okay, this one appears to be the one that's more contradictory, so let's go for it. Objection. Yes! And you witnessed this? You saw Miss Sky stab the victim with the knife? As I've said, yes. I swear it on my finest salmon swirl lunch. Ew. Hmm. I'm sure that is a fine lunch as well. Can you pass that over here, please? Come on, pass it over. But isn't that odd? Look at the... Oh, Jesus Christ. Look at this photograph. This is the photograph you took the very moment of the crime, is it not? Then why is Miss Sky not holding a knife? Ahem! 
Mr. Edgeworth, your thoughts? Objection. That had to be the weakest objection ever, Edgeworth. Yet, it was still stronger than your ever feeble mind, Mr. Wright. What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? This photograph was not taken the moment before the stabbing. This was taken the moment after the stabbing. Objection. A and how can you tell that? Blood splatter. Huh? But that's why I was objecting. See the dark crimson stains on the prosecutor's coat? But it's a black and white photograph. What else could it be, dummy? Ah, so, uh, yes. It's hard to tell, but this could be blood. Well, Mr. Wright, I see no problem here. No problem, except you. Mr. Wright, are you going to just sit there and take that kind of abuse? Uh, you got a better idea? Sure, let's object. Just for funsies. Wait, that contradicts what the witness said in her testimony. It sure did. Namely, that she took the picture the moment she witnessed the crime. Well, it seems I was just slightly unclear. My apologies. Th that's it? If you run out of lunch, you order seconds. Problem solved. If you don't like it, try ordering the jumbo-sized lunch from the get-go. Good advice. I'm not sure I understand it, but good advice. I didn't have time to stop her. Prosecutor Sky was cold, calculating, like a robot. She killed without pain or remorse. It was a premeditated murder. Objection. Pre premeditated? How do you know? Look at the chief prosecutor's hands in that photograph. Well, uh, are those g gloves? Surgical gloves made of a thin rubber, most likely. Why would she have those on? Uh... If it was not premeditated, she would not be wearing those gloves. Well, uh... Rubble, 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 clack. Though these gloves do seem to tell a tale of premeditation. Premeditated murder. A serious offense. Witness, add this to your testimony. You know, the witness is not supposed to say... That the, uh, that the accused committed murder. That's an automatic objection. Anyway, uh, the murder was planned. The rubber gloves prove it. But wait. I think we got something here. Wasn't there... Oh, there was another picture, but we don't have it as a photograph. Uh, well, let's just press her on it see what she says. What if she was just in the habit of wearing gloves? Like, driving gloves. Objection. The gloves were admitted as evidence when the defendant was arrested. They were rubber gloves of the kind used for autopsies. In other words, when the chief prosecutor came to the, cr came to the crime scene, she came to do murder. It's the only possible conclusion one can make. Everything was planned. It was a premeditated crime. Ugh. Impressive. I'm sorry they took you off the force, Miss Star. This is bad. She's got them thinking this was all planned. If she can prove this claim, the trial is over. The trial's already over. I've got to think of a way to show that this wasn't premeditated. It, it's only a flesh wound, Mr. Wright. We can make it. You said that before. Anything else? Scientifically speaking, the star's testimony is flawless. Okay, shut up, shut up, shut up. I know what you're saying. Okay. So there's got to be something we have to present. Here. Murder was premeditated.
Uh, I don't know. I present the blue badger. No. Um. Hmm. No. got to be something here that I'm supposed to present. <sighs> I don't know. Don't know. What the hell am I supposed to? Wait a minute. The knife. This must be the victim's blood, right? Either that or Edgeworth cut himself peeling an apple. What's Edgeworth doing with a knife like this anyway? Hey, maybe he spends his weekends uh, roughing it in the, in the wild. Edgeworth in the wild? I think my fruit peeling theory is more likely. Are, are you kidding? I always pictured him as an outdoorsman. Now there's a scary thought. Okay, um... The murder was planned, premeditated, but she had to use a knife that was in the car. Okay. Objection. Objection. Witness, do you know what this is? Are you trying to test me? I sell box lunches for a living, you know. That's a knife. The knife. The knife that was in Mr. Edgeworth's, Mr. Edgeworth's trunk. Indeed, it is my knife. Robble, 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 robble. What's with this case? The defendant is in the chief prosecutor. Mommy, are prosecutors bad people? The defense has a request. We ask that the witness provide an accurate testimony. What's that, rookie? In your testimony, you stated that Lana Sky planned this murder. And that's why she was wearing those special gloves. Seems like a natural conclusion to me. The gloves do indicate planning. However, why would she not also prepare the most important thing? The murder weapon. Oh. This knife just happened to be in the trunk of that car. Ladies and gentlemen... If you're going to plan a murder, you don't forget the weapon. Ugh. Oh! Clack. Order, order, order! Great. Now the tide is turning in my favor. Great show, Mr. Wright. My sister's as good as free. <laughs> right. I believe the next lunch you'll be eating is humble pie. Oh, what? What? I hope you weren't deluding yourself into thinking that the tide has turned. Not over such a trifling detail. But, but this this shot uh, this shoots holes. Um, start over. But this shoots a hole in the whole premeditated theory. Bah, humbug. The prosecution could care less if it was premeditated or not. 
The only one who seems to care is that lunch lady over there. The defendant, Lana Sky, murdered a detective with a knife. <laughs> but is that the only thing the prosecution needs to prove? Uh, th oh, I'm sorry. That is the only thing the prosecution needs to prove. Nothing else. How did I get a question out of that? I don't know. Very good, Mr. Prosecutor. I suppose you think you're clever now. But you know as well as I do that she planned on killing him. It was planned. If it wasn't, why would she have been wearing... Clack. I believe I'd like to hear your testimony again. Witness, please tell us only what you saw, not what you thought. How dare you! My powers of deduction are not to be underestimated. Really now. Angel's deduction. Lana Sky intended to murder Detective Goodman. That's why she called the victim all the way to the prosecutor's office. I'm sure the chief prosecutor had a grudge against the victim. Nothing else could drive that human machine to plunge the knife in again and again. Oh my god. The victim... Oh, uh, the victim was summoned from the police department to the prosecutor's office. It does sound a lot like premeditation, doesn't it? So, if I ordered a pizza, does that mean I'm planning to kill the delivery boy? In any case, the defense may now cross-examine the witness. Okay, this one's too easy. So let's just... Okay. Foolish girl. Autopsy report. There we go. One knife wound. Objection. You say she stabbed him again and again. But you couldn't have witnessed that. Are you testing me? Then I'll test you. With my moss surprise. Ew. I'm afraid the moss is growing under our feet as we wait, Miss Star. Hmm. What do you mean? I shouldn't have to explain this, but take a look. The autopsy report states that death was due to a loss of blood from one stab wound. Aha! You're right! Good show, Mr. Edgeworth. It was my objection. What a hunk! He's my hero. Really. What about my objection? No one noticed. Well, well, witness. Got the crime scene set, right? Uh, oh, thank you! Mm. Oh, mm. I always believed that no one could ever mistake ketchup for blood. But now I realize that such mistakes are possible. So, you're saying you mistook something for blood? When she lifted her knife, I thought I saw blood at her breast. Uh, spattered blood from her victim. That's why I thought she must have stabbed him at least twice. Then tell us what you saw that you thought was blood. Testify! Her red muffler looked like blood to me. That's how ghastly the whole scene was. But wait a minute. She's not wearing her muffler. Objection. Objection! You're making this too easy. Miss Star, I demand an explanation. Objection! The witness is clearly not suited for detective work. What? what? The suspect was not wearing a scarf or muffler of any kind when she stabbed the victim. And you've proven it yourself with this photograph. Huh? But, 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 that... That, that can't be. Only a professional lunch lady could be so utterly clueless. Congratulations. Perhaps you've finally found your true calling in life. Hmm. Harsh words. Hmm. But so good. Hmm. Tasty. In, a, in the end, Mr. Edgeworth prevails. What was my objection? Chopped liver? But, but, it was there. A scarf. No, not that, but something red. Really? Well now, where were we? The witness has given us an, an entertaining interlude, but back to business. What? what? 
Clack. Very well, witness. Continue your testimony. You saw the crime and apprehended the suspect. Tell us about that. Mm hmm? Very well. I do remember some things accurately, at least. Ultimately, we couldn't shake the most important part of her testimony. The most important part? The part where she, the part where your sister stabs the victim. This next testimony might be just the moment of truth. After the murder, the suspect attempted to run behind a partition off to her side. I quickly caught her, explained her rights to her, and arrested her on the spot. Ah, yes. When I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. That's what had me confused in my early testimony. The chief prosecutor, uh, the chief prosecutor made to escape, but against Angel Star, resistance was futile. You are quite determined about this scarf, aren't you? I strike like a like a snake and bite like a cobra. That's me, Angel Star. That wasn't a very good metaphor. First of all, a cobra is a kind of snake. Don't bother me with details unless you want to get bitten. Th no, thanks. Note to self, Mr. Wright is weak against poisonous snakes. The chief prosecutor tried to resist, but her efforts were in vain. She knocked my hands away, kicked over an oil drum. Uh, a an oil drum? Hard to imagine. Oh, she's beautiful, but deadly. A predator, this one. A leopard woman. Rawr. Well, very well, Mr. Wright. You're a cross-examination, if you will. Okay. Apprehending the suspect. I kind of... I think I know what... I quickly caught her. No, you didn't. Oh, no! This evidence clearly reveals a contradiction in that statement, Your Honor. How exactly are that evidence and that statement just now related? They aren't. Are they? Not at all. Mr. Wright, please think the facts over before making accusations. Okay. Thinking ahead of the game. I don't think that won me any points with the judge. In fact, I think I just lost a point or two. I quickly caught her, explained her rights to her, and arrested her on the spot. Okay, let's back up. I know that the floor plan is going to come into this because she couldn't have caught up with the witness. There was a chain link fence between them. Okay, let's, let's start at the beginning. So where is this partition on the floor plan? I'm sure she means this wall next to the car. That's right. There was a wall there about six feet high. She was obviously trying to hide herself. Quite a natural thing for a criminal to do. And what did you do then? I quickly caught her, explained her rights to her, and arrested her on the spot. Hold it. You say quickly. Were you close to the suspect? As I just said, I was only 30 feet away from her the whole time. Hmm, maybe I should press her for more details. Press. I'd like you to see this on the floor plans, just to be safe. The lunch lane... The lunch lane car was... She was a visitor. She was a visitor, thus she was parked in B block. So you witnessed the murder from here. That would make it about 30 feet from the car. Yes. Is that correct, Miss Star? Y yes, that's right. But there was a chain link fence in front of you. I went over it, of course. Oh. F fuck you. Amazing. The cough up queen, lunch lady, athlete, indeed. It would have taken her a little a little time to climb over that fence. So she couldn't have gotten to my sister that fast. Yeah, that fence was about nine feet high, too. So how did Miss Sky not get away? Hmm. Ah yes, when I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. Did she now? She mentioned the muffler? What exactly did she say? If I remember exactly, I would have told you in my testimony. Cheeky. 
Anyway, all I heard her say was the word muffler. Just that one word? So, what you heard wasn't the suspect talking to you, but to someone else? Yes, the chief prosecutor was talking on her phone. Her phone? She can't mean... Oh, yes, she can. By phone, do you mean this cell phone discovered at the crime scene? Yes, uh, yes ultimately. Ultimately? My memory. It's like a salmon heading upstream, you see. No, no the court doesn't see, Miss Starr. The chief prosecutor first attempted to use the phone hanging on the wall. On the wall? That's right. Near the car, there was an emergency phone on the wall. Apparently, it was out of order. And so she used her cell phone? Indeed, the emergency phone was out of order that day. Hmm. Good witnessing, witness. Good, good witnessing? Whatever happened to good testifying? Clack. You should, of course, add this to your testimony. The things I do to please this rookie defense attorney. Lana's cell phone updated in the court record. I saw it. How she tried the phone on the wall, but had to use her cell instead. Really? Um, do you think you could restate your testimony for the court? Aha! I was going to ask the same thing! I'll only say this one time, so listen close, rookies. The chief prosecutor stabbed the victim and ran behind the partition. Then she picked up the, the emergency phone on the wall, but it was out of order. So she pulled her own cell phone out of her pocket. And during that time, you... And during the... Oh, I'm sorry, Judge is talking. And during that time, you climbed over the chain link fence. Then, when I boldly grabbed her arm, the chief prosecutor hung up her phone. And you saw her doing this? What is it, Mr. Wright? I see the problem here. Now I gotcha. Objection. Miss Star, I have to conclude that you have a personal grudge against Miss Lana Sky. Objection. Objection. The witness is a former detective. Her testimony is unmarred by personal bias. Well, who would have thought you would be my knight in shining armor, prosecutor? You who, together with the, with the chief prosecutor, kicked me out two years ago. Well, Miss Starr, this is a fatal contradiction with your testimony. How do you explain this? Hmm. I don't know what you're talking about. Mess with me, and I'll make you cough it all up. Ahem. <clears throat> Look at the floor plans. You said you witnessed the crime from this point. However, if that's true, you couldn't possibly have seen Miss Sky making that phone call. Uh -huh. I believe you see what I'm get I believe you see what I'm getting at. That emergency phone was on the back side of this partition. If indeed you were in Block B, you couldn't have seen it. But ah! Order, order! What is the meaning of this? It's simple, Your Honor. She's not coughing up lunch. She's coughing up lies. Ah! Objection. That's quite a claim, Mr. Wright. Perhaps you will allow me a question? Tell us exactly what lie this witness has just told the court. Here's where the counterattack begins. I can't afford to get this wrong. The witness lied about? Uh, it's, it could be the order of events. Oh, it could be any of these. Uh, I gotta think about this for a second. I think it's this one. 
yeah, that's a bit contrived. That's gonna that involves too many assumptions. Um. Okay, let's go with this. Miss Sky tried to use the emergency phone, but it was out of order. What is significant about this fact? Nothing. Therefore, it would be pointless for Miss Star to lie about it. Pointless to lie? I see. But say the witness did actually see Miss Sky using the emergency phone. It would mean Miss Star witnessed the crime from a different location. Objection. A, a different location. Now that's a pointless lie if ever I heard one. Objection. Before you call my lie pointless, my, my truth rather, at least let me tell it. Let me ask a question to our clever wordsmith, Mr. Wright. Just where was the witness when she saw the crime? All the testimony we've heard up, up until now points to one direction. The place where Miss Star witnessed this crime. Uh... Well, the angle from that photograph has her about right here, so I'm going to say right here. Or maybe she was in the security room because she was visiting her boyfriend. In fact, she said she was visiting her boyfriend, but then how does she have a picture over here? Something screwy. I don't know. I don't know what to say. Well, we'll, we'll risk a strike. We'll say security room. Uh, this is the only place where she could have been. The security guard room? Indeed, the security room in the underground parking lot is well positioned. It's built on the second floor, so you can see the entire lot. Hmm, she would have been able to see the emergency phone from there. But why there? There are many other places where she could have seen the phone. Not in this case, Your Honor. The witness, not being part of the prosecutor's office, couldn't park in A block. The only place where she could have seen the crime uh, and the back of the partition is here. I remember in your testimony, you said you brought a lunch to your boyfriend in the security guard room, yes? Well, Miss Star? Uh, how many years have I been getting the better of men? To think the tables could be turned. Today, a man has got the better of Angel Star. Rubble, 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 rubble. Quack. Order, order, witness! What have you done? You used to be a detective. You should know better. I'm not turning back. The guilty will be punished. And I'll do what I must to make sure justice prevails. The guilty? Is she talking about Miss Skye? Um, Mr. Wright... Doesn't this strike you as odd? Why'd Miss Star lie? It doesn't make sense. Huh? She could have just said she saw the crime from the security guard room station. Wouldn't change anything. Exactly. This photograph tells all. It was the defendant who stabbed the victim. The truth still stands. Objection. It still stands. I disagree, Mr. Edgeworth. What? what? Nani? If a witness is found to be lying, they're guilty of perjury. She knows this. She wouldn't risk that without a good reason. Quack. So tell, tell us what her reason was, Mr. Wright. Huh? Uh, me, me? Who else? Mr. Wright, let's review what we know. Miss Star witnessed the crime from the security guard station. But she lied and said she saw it from B Block. It must make a vital difference, but what? What would change? Um, pretty sure. Not that one. It's one of these two. Hmm. 
see the, the picture. It's too obvious though, because the picture is taken from the other side of the fence. How did that picture get taken? But then she was pretty insistent about the distance. Well, let's let's start with this one. Why the angle at which she saw the crime occur would change. The the angle? What do you mean? Uh um well, the security guard station is on the second floor and um she would have sort of a more 3D view of the crime. Oh. And this is important why? Um <laughs> Damn it. Perhaps you'd like to reconsider, Mr. Wright. God damn it. Mr. Wright, let's review what we know. Yeah, 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 come on. Okay, distance to the crime. It changes the distance between her and the scene of the crime. Objection. My condolences, Mr. Wright, but one look at the floor plans and it's quite clear. The distance between the scene of the crime and the guard station is 30 feet. I don't know how that would change what she could see. Objection. Objection! What she saw is not in question here. What matters is the time it would take her to reach the scene of the crime. Uh. Miss Star, you witnessed the crime scene uh, from the security guard station. Now, how long did it take you to go from there to the scene of the crime where you were arrested Miss Sky? Well, witness? You... Yes? You ordered the squid wheels, right? You ordered the squid wheels, right? I read that wrong. Uh, the quality of my lunches has gone from low to inedible. I was bringing a PB&J lunch with fresh boysenberry jam to my boyfriend. Hmm, boysenberry for the boyfriend? He wasn't in the station, so I waited. I witnessed the crime from the glass-walled station. Aha! And before I knew what I was doing, I found myself running toward the scene. But the door was locked. I couldn't open it. Are you kidding me? That's why I had to go through the visitor's parking lot in B-Block. Ah, that solves it. That's quite a detour. That's how she got the picture. And that's why the picture's after the crime had already been committed. The alleged crime. And that partition means that she didn't actually see anything. It probably took me at least five minutes to get to the, to get to the scene of the crime. Five minutes?! Hmm, this changes things considerably. But it was that woman over there in the defendant's chair who stabbed him. I know it. I have photographic evidence. I swear it. I swear it on my finest plastic... plastic spork. You have a point. The spork is a wonderful invention. Would you like another caviar lunch? Absolutely! Oh, 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 oh. Uh-oh. Mr. Wright, you have to do something. He's making a pig of himself. Do I have any evidence to stop this? Uh... Do I? Sure, I always say move forward with the objections. Five minutes between the witness... between the witnessing of the murder and the arrest. Think about it. You could make pasta in that amount of time. If you like it, El Dante. If you like it, El Dante. I've got lunch boxes that tie pasta into knots, rookie. A five minute blank. Isn't that strange? Strange. If you were a criminal, what would you do with five minutes, Your Honor? Well, um, I guess I'd flee the scene. Hey! Don't get me. Go, don't get the wrong idea. I didn't kill anyone. But you have the instincts of a killer. You would run. But this time was different. Miss Sky dawdled at the scene of the crime. She even had her picture taken. No true criminal would act this way. 
It's inconceivable. You, yeah! Rubble, 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 rubble. Quack. Well then, it seems we've come to the end of this testimony. The witness has a grudge against the defendant and a blank in her testimony. Mr. Edgeworth, is the next witness ready to go? Unfortunately, I appear to have overestimated this witness on the account of her professional history. We did it. We screwed that can shut, Mr. Wright. Th that's, that was too close. Clack. I'm afraid that the cough-up queen has been dethroned, and with that, court is adjourned. All right. Hold it. Mr. Edgeworth, you ordered the squid wheels, right? That's the order she tried to foist onto me. I prefer not to take the defense team's leftovers. Anything else to say? I I might be able to save you. I have decisive evidence. What what was that? Is this another one of the her, one of her trick lunch boxes? My apologies, but we have no further questions to ask of you, Miss Starr. Besides, I want to finish this lunch. Here. Mm -hmm. Ah, is this your jumbo lunchbox? Whoa, 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 a triple decker! Uh, out of deference to the witness's determination, I'll allow one more testimony. Let's hear about this decisive evidence. Like the Lunchland motto says, we won't, you won't be disappointed. What's she going to pull out of her lunchbox this time? Decisive evidence. I should have mentioned those five minutes when I wasn't looking at the crime scene. And now, to the matter of the victim's shoe. Did I not bring this up? No, you didn't. Two types of blood were found on this shoe. One was, of course, the victim's. And the other... And the other blood type matches that of defendant, Vislana Sky. This shoe proves it. It's flawless, decisive evidence. Hmm, I might already see a problem in here. What, what? There, there was blood found on that shoe? Try Lunchland for all your lunch and decisive evidence needs. Rubble, 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 rubble. Objection. Witness, what's the meaning of this? Why is this the first time I've heard of this evidence? Simple, as I've already said. I don't trust you with evidence, Mr. Edgeworth. That's why I took the liberty of investigating this myself. And you had blood tests performed? Didn't I mention? I have three boyfriends in forensics. In any case, Your Honor, I can't accept this as evidence. What? You must know the two rules of evidence law. Rule one, no evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. In other words, this shoe is illegal evidence, at least for the time being. Is that right, Mr. Wright? It seems so. Edgeworth sure is celebrating. Not so, not so fast, Mr. Edgeworth. Don't forget, I used to be a detective. As I mentioned previously, this shoe had already been tested by a member of the forensics department. As you can see, it was approved by the police department as of today. Even the general public can produce official evidence, Mr. Pro uh, Mr. Edgeworth. Uh, uh. Is that right, Mr. Wright? It seems so. Edgeworth is looking pretty sullen. You could at least study some evidence law, really. Clack. The prosecution's complaints notwithstanding, it appears that this evidence satisfies the first rail of evidence law. However, it seems you have yet another count against you, witness. Anything to ensure that uh, the guilty are properly judged. Victim shoe added to the court record. Very well, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Decisive evidence. Okay. Why did you lie about those five minutes? I guess you could say I just wanted people to look at the results. The results? How many times do I have to say this? 
I saw the chief prosecutor stab the victim before my very eyes. Compared to that, a five minute blank means nothing. Then why didn't you just tell the truth? Don't make me laugh. We're dealing with the most untrustworthy of vile most We're dealing with the most untrustworthy of the vile lot known as prosecutors. Falsified evidence, arranged testimonies, erasing and manipulating evidence. When you fight monsters, you need to use every trick in the book. This when the suspect is admitting she did it. But false testimony is the most despicable crime of all, Miss Starr. Let's just get this over with. And now to the matter of the victim's shoe. Did I not bring this up? No, you didn't. And you found this shoe at the scene of the crime? I detained the chief prosecutor and notified the police department. I wanted to make myself useful while I was waiting for the police to arrive. So, like an ill-trained pooch, you snuck off with a shoe. I was afraid someone would erase the chief prosecutor's crime. This shoe was my secret weapon if that should happen. See this fashionable basket I have here? It carries more than lunchboxes, gentlemen. I am happy for you and your lunchbox bag, really. Kind of gross you're keeping bloody evidence in with the food. In any case, you removed valuable evidence from the scene of the crime. Now, tell us what you did next. Two types of blood were found on this shoe. One was, of course, the victim's. Hold it. So you brought it to the forensics department? If you're going to submit something as evidence in the court, you need it approved. To do that, evidence must be analyzed by a forensic expert. And she got away with her little coup because she used to be a detective. The shoe does appear to have bloodstains on it. Well, the man was stabbed after all. And that blood belonged to the victim, Detective Goodman. As I said, there were two types of blood found on the shoe. And the other blood type matched that of the defendant, Miss Lana Sky. You can't say for sure the blood belongs to the defendant with a blood test. You claim to know something about blood tests, rookie. Huh? Well, speak up. Uh, well, uh, blood comes in four types, A, B, O, and A, B. However, you can't tell from a blood test whether a murder was committed in cold blood. That's just a figure of speech, Mr. Wright. Actually, we can differentiate between millions of types with all the blood tests out there. Which means that we can more or less nar narrow any sample of blood down to just one person. Or so I hear. But that's pretty specific. If I had a little more time, I would have gotten DNA test results. But they said there's very little doubt it could be anyone but Miss Lana Skies. Hmm. So the suspect's blood was found on the victim's shoe. That ties her directly to the death of Detective Goodman. I was afraid he was going to say that. This shoe proves that it. it's flawless, decisive evidence. Hold it. I can't let this evidence go through without a fight. You ordered the peppered fish guts, right? Ew. Some like it hot, Mr. Wright. Some like your client. Uh, some like your client. She's in enough hot water to make a whole vat of soup. Mr. Wright, do you or don't you have a problem with this shoe? A problem? This is critical. Is there a problem with the victim's shoe? Well, uh, let's examine the shoe. I forgot to do that. This blood, it's my sister's, right? It appears so. On his right hand was bandaged when I saw her in jail. She must have cut herself at the time of the crime. Poor sis. Okay, there's nothing in there. There's blood down here. Ah! There's blood here, too! On the sole of the shoe, it's got to be the victim's. 
He must have stepped in a puddle of his own blood. All this blood is horrible. Hmm. This blood might be an important clue. Yeah, but how do I... How do I get the stick? What's the... No, come on, come on. Here we go. This has got to be it, because there's clearly no blood there. It's after the crime. If I'm not imagining things, I'd say there's one critical problem with this evidence. A clear contradiction. That gleam in your eyes. You're still young, rookie. I'd give you a peppered fish gut now, but you couldn't take the heat, could you? Clack. Let's hear what Mr. Wright has to say. What is contradictory about the victim's shoe? Show us the problem with this evidence. Okay, it's... Take that. I wonder if you noticed... There's blood on the bottom, bottom of this shoe. Don't mess with me, rookie. Or it'll be blood on your... It'll be blood on the bottom of my shoe. Hmm, indeed. There is quite a bit of blood on the bottom of the shoe. It makes sense. The victim was stabbed with a knife. What could possibly be contradictory about blood on the bottom of his shoe? Oh, 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 Edgeworth. Take that. The problem lies in the footprint. The, the footprint? But there wasn't a foot... Oh, shit. Note that the bottom of the victim's shoe is covered in blood. Then, isn't it strange? Why weren't any bloody footprints found by the scene of the crime? Aha! As you can see, there were no traces of any such footprints at the scene of the crime. That contradicts your claim about this shoe. Objection. This picture only shows part of the floor, so there could have been bloody footprints. Objection. Then where are they, Mr. Edgeworth? Because we checked the scene and found nothing of the sort. Rubble, 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 rubble. Clack. Clack, clack, clack. Order, order, order! Well, witness? What? Uh, 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 I, uh, uh, great going, Mr. Wright, but it's true that the lack of a footprint is a contradiction. But then we have to ask why there wasn't a footprint. Oh, that's true. There has to be a reason why there wasn't a footprint. Think, Mr. Wright, think. Hmm. Hey, I don't know why the, I don't know why there is there isn't one. Uh, I'm just good at finding contradictions. What? Hold it. <laughs> I see. Now I get it. Get what? Our witness is more devious than I gave her credit for. We were hoodwinked to the very end. But she slipped. There is one vital. But she slipped. There is one vital hint to the truth in her testimony. What? Well, what are you talking about? Think back to when she told us about apprehending the suspect. The chief prosecutor tried to resist, but her efforts were in vain. She knocked my hands aside, kicked over an oil drum. Oh, she's beautiful, but deadly. A predator. This one. A leopard woman. Rawr. Why did we play back the RAR? I thought that was strange. That was a strange thing for the, for the normally cool-headed chief to do. No kidding. Now, witness, allow me to ask a very simple question. This oil drum, was it empty? Oh, that. Hmm. Not sure. Not sure I like your attitude, Mr. Edgeworth. Though apparently you're not the slowest conveyor belt in the lunchbox factory. Witness! Well, was the oil drum empty? The oil drum kicked over by the chief prosecutor was brimming with water. But water? What does that mean? But the order of events are wrong. I already see the problem here. Still don't get it, Mr. Wright? Do you want to know the reason she knocked it over? The real reason? Aha! You don't mean... Yes, the suspect knocked over that oil, oil drum 
for one reason and one reason only. To erase the bloodstains that would become evidence against her. Whoa. Rubble, 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 clack. That ties things up quite nicely. The blood stains left on the victim's shoes tie her quite clearly to this murder. Then after the deed was done, she knocked over the oil drum to erase the telltale signs. Why, that's, why, that's a prosecutor's speciality, erasing evidence. That reminds me, miss. Miss Guy's right hand was hurt. Didn't she say she cut herself when she stabbed him? So that's when my sister's blood got on the shoe? Well, I see no reason to prolong this trial, but Mr. Wright, do something, please. But what, uh, what can I do? Your sister has confessed to the crime, and she tried to conceal it. But, but... Enough. There is no need for further debate. The verdict, Your Honor. Very well. Put Angel Star... But, but Angel Star is on the prosecution side. She could have been lying about the water. Clack. This court finds the defendant, Miss Lana Sky. Hold it. Little girl, what did you just say? Huh, m m me? Did you say that I, Angel Star, was on the prosecution side? Well, well yeah, you are. You're saying my sister hid evidence by erasing the bloody footprints. Well, I thought you'd had your fill, but here you are, demanding a second helping. Another lunchbox. A lunchbox, a lunchbox called Evidence. Well, wait, witness, don't tell me you have something else. Objection. The time for deliberations is past. Any further comments and you will be held in contempt of court. I have nothing but contempt for this court. Your threats don't scare the cough up queen. Look at this. Photograph. A, a photograph? I had it just in case anyone had, had the gall to suggest that the white shoe didn't belong to the victim. Hmm. I see no room for error in this evidence. Mr. Wright, wait. Look at the asphalt in the photo. Hey, it's clearly wet. Clack. Erasing the last trace of doubt from the court's mind. Immediately after the murder, the crime scene was washed with water. I, I'm sorry, Mr. Wright. I guess I couldn't help after all. It's not your fault. I knew I couldn't win this case from the beginning. And it seems this is what your sister wanted anyway. I'm sorry, Mia. Right. Wet or not. Don't be so quick to throw in the towel. That was a pretty nice metaphor there, Mia. Get yourself, get yourself up off the asphalt. Take another good look. Don't give up. Not, not until the bitter end. Uh, we're at the bitter end. This is the last piece of evidence. Very well. This time I'd like to declare a verdict. Uh, for the, this time I'd like to declare a verdict for good. Now, I need to take a break. I'm getting tongue-tied. Uh-oh. Your Honor, wait. Oh, uh, what is it with you people? Can't I hand down my verdicts in peace anymore? Whatever is it? Uh, whatever it is, can it wait? N no, it can't. Then it will be too late. Look at... <sighs> Look at this photograph last submitted. <sighs> this trial isn't over until we give each piece of evidence proper consideration. So right. Are you saying there's a problem with this latest piece of evidence? Yeah. I'll think later. Yeah, there's a problem. Right or wrong, I've got to go ahead with this. I suppose since we've come this far, we should give every claim a fair shake. Very well, Mr. Wright. Show the court the problem 
in this photograph. Uh, is it that the what's this? What is this? Take that. The problem in this photograph is here. What's this? Oh, sorry, Edgeworth. What's this? There's something poking out of the car's muffler. Wait just a moment, Mr. Edgeworth. Your Honor. You just said muffler. However, I see no trace of a muffler or scarf of any kind in this photograph. Hmm. A muffler is also a part of a car or motorcycle, Your Honor. Just think of it as part of the exhaust system. A pipe. I see, and... I see! What's that suspicious-looking... Oh, I'm sorry, Judge is talking. What's that suspicious-looking cloth sticking out of the car's muffler? Hm. So what if there is something sticking out of the muffler? What does it have to do with this case? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. You're so stupid. Objection. Objection. Sorry, Miss Star, but it's not going to be that easy. In fact, you've already told us why this is important to the case. You said as much in your testimony. But what? Let's hear what Mr. Wright has, has on his mind. Tell us why you think this piece of cloth in the muffler is related to this case. Uh, I don't know. Wait. The word muffler was... Aha. Miss Star, recall your testimony for the court. Ah, yes. When I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. That's what had me confused by her, by my early test. God damn it. That's what had me confused in my early testimony. Muffler. Ah! Ah! Could it be that the muffler you heard mentioned was actually this exhaust pipe? If so, that means this piece of evidence, this piece of cloth is vital evidence. Oh. Oh! Well, it seems we have to suspend the proceedings. S suspend? I find myself wondering about that piece of cloth. If we leave any questions unanswered here, we do a disservice to the law. Have the car at the crime scene inspected at once, and bring me that cloth. The verdict will wait until after we've seen all the evidence. Agreed? Hmm. I suppose so. Whew! That was close. But we made it. At least for now. This court will adjourn for a 30-minute recess. It's lunchtime, after all. He's still hungry. All right, I think I'm going to adjourn myself. <sighs> and uh, have something something to eat. Because it is getting close to breakfast time. I'll be back. <laughs>